thiện nhân now seven made national headlines when he was found abandoned three days after his birth in a mountainous region of Quảng Nam Province in central Vietnam. Wild animals had devoured his genitals and his right leg. His adoptive mother, Mai Anh, took the boy to major hospitals in Thailand, Singapore and the US. But leading doctors said they could not recreate a penis for Thiện Nhân because it was a procedure they had never performed before. But luck finally smiled on him. In Italy, Dr. Roberto De Castro from the Bologna Hospital had publicized his research into recreating penises for patients in cases similar to that of Thiện Nhân. American doctors informed Mai Ang and introduced her to the Italian doctor. Mai Ang and Greg Kraft, president of Asian Injury Prevention or AIP and godfather of Thiện Nhân, sought to bring Thiện Nhân to Italy to see Dr. Roberto De Castro. Four operations later, Thiện Nhân is now a real boy. The miracle has been repeated since the Thiện Nhân Journey program kicked off to help hundreds of other children in Vietnam also suffering from genital losses or defects. Hello and welcome to Talk Vietnam. Many Vietnamese have at least once heard the story of Thiện Nhân, who is now dubbed the Brave Tin Soldier and his journey to returning to a normal life. Behind this miracle stands his family who had great care and support for him, as well as a talented Italian doctor. It's our honor today to welcome Dr. Roberto De Castro in our studio. Hi, Dr. De Castro. Um, thank you for coming on the show today. How are you? you? I'm fine, thank you. Let's go back to the very beginning. Can you tell me what made you decide to help Thiet Nhân and, and how did you do it? They came to me. They came mm -hmm. to, I, I had the opportunity in August 2010. Mm -hmm. To, to see him for the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's such an extraordinary boy. You really, really such a nice, nice, very, very intelligent, very intelligent, very smart. And I had the opportunity to meet the mother, the adopted mother, and uh, May Ann, a wonderful lady, and the, the uh, Mr. Kraft and Mrs. Kraft that support the, the, the organization. And they asked me if there was any chance to, to do my phalloplastic for Tien. Tien had a special story because he was not a congenital. He was born perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. And then he had the, you know, the story, the trauma, and the, he lost the penis. In this particularly traumatic uh, aphelia, we call traumatic aphelia, traumatic absence of the penis, behind the scar, behind the, the situation that you find at the, the place mm -hmm. of genitalia, deep inside, sometime it's possible to find some residual corpora mm -hmm. cavernosa. That is something that they, in the congenital uh, absence of the penis is ne it's never, it's never mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. So this is something that could be very, very important. And actually Tien Nam had uh, a, a enough amount of corpora cavernosa inside and we made the penis around this corpora mm -hmm. with the idea to have a penis that could function, could have erection, could have uh, uh, sensation mm -hmm. and this was the first operation that, so we decided to do the operation and the first operation was done in Italy and this was uh, in the end of January winter time was mm -hmm. snowing in Bologna mm -hmm. and Tiena was looking at the window because this snow was not so common for him it was not he was not familiar with, with the snow and, and so we did the operation and uh, we were happy about the the, 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 the immediate outcome, outcome, but unfortunately uh, we realized after some days there was some problem. The, 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 the penis we made was not very well vascularized and then some infection came oh. and this made mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately our operation, our operation not completely successful I can say maybe un an unsuccessful one. And this was one of the most important um, uh, reasons because I was really ready to come because I, I, my, my first goal was to come back and see him and, and see if I have the possibili possibility to, you know, to do something mm -hmm. again for him. Family was very so nice to, to, you know, to accept such a, a, a difficult situation and him Tien Nam himself, he would say, well, don't worry, 
Roberto is coming to fix me again. <laughs> so he was you know, <laughs> so so nice to, to to still to have the hope for yeah. for the good future. And so very strong. And work. so we came. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the two two operation in preparation of the of the big moment when we do the redo operation. It was a five, about five hours uh, uh, uh -huh. surgery, mm -hmm. and uh, but luckily we were able again to find this uh, mm -hmm. residual corpora and able again to, to make the penis. And apparently this time we don't have any trouble and uh, no infection. Mm -hmm. So I hope to finally to have, to reach, to have reached a very good result. I hope so too. June 2012 was the third time Dr. Roberto de Castro operated on Tiet Nien, following the first procedure at the Bologna Hospital where he works. This time, his co-surgeon was Vietnamese-American doctor Tuệ Ding, a plastic surgeon from Houston, Texas. It was Dr. Tuệ Ding who introduced Tiet Nien's family to Dr. de Castro's technique of phalloplasty. The ultimate goal is to create a phallus, a penis, and that is our ultimate goal, and a functional penis it's a working that is going, he's going to be able to urinate to the end of penis. Now, this is pretty complicated, so I think today we are going to see if the flap, which is a piece of tissue that we put tissue expander last year to expand, whether the flap is going to be viable. The blood supply should be enough, but we're not sure. We're going to check on that. Doctors from the surgical department at the National Pediatrics Hospital gained valuable experience from assisting Dr. DeCastro, one of the top urologists in the world during surgery. Giáo sư này cũng được Castro là cũng là là người mà sáng tạo ra cái phương pháp mà tạo tạo hình tái tạo lại cái con sinh dục nam cho các cháu mà bị bị mất một phần mất hư hoàn toàn. Thì đây là một kỹ thuật mới không chỉ ở ở Việt Nam mà của cả thế giới nữa. Thì do vậy mà khi ông ấy thực hiện các cái kỹ thuật này ở đây chúng tôi có thể học tập và có thể thực hiện được cho những cháu về sau này. Nếu về nói về mặt hình thức, hình thái của cái cái bộ phận s
Wow. And this, and this, and then, then you had to feel like a balloon, and slowly, slowly, uh, week after week, and months after months, you you have uh, um, some extra skin yeah. that is coming. Uh, at that point, when you remove the skin expander, you have extra skin, extra mm -hmm. skin available. Mm -hmm. So to, to do that, to do that, we had to to do two operations, and uh, so finally we reached the amount of skin a good a good mm -hmm. amount of skin to possibility to do to do the surgery again that's excellent um, what can you say about the prospects for Tinian after his fourth surgery Tinian had uh, not only a cosmetical reconstruction yeah. of the penis but also functional reconstruction mm -hmm. and of course he will need some uh, more treatment mm -hmm. by the pediatric endocrinologist and the future by the general endocrinologist um, but he can have he can have a normal sexual life. That's that's, that's really that's amazing. very yeah. very very important. And now, after all those years, who is Tianyun to you right now? Oh, <laughs> 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 he, um, <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I love him very much. I don't know if he <laughs> he still uh, he, he still he likes if he likes me still. <laughs> Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, immediately after surgery, he's a little bit, um, you know, not so happy mm -hmm. to see me uh, uh, because mm -hmm. I have to do some little dressing, some little change. But um, I hope that he will, you know, again we will, I will reach his confidence uh, mm -hmm. very, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> On her journey to find a way for her son to become a real boy, my Aung Tietnyan's adopted mother uh, found a way to bring happiness to other people suffering under similar circumstances. She joined forces with Greg Kraft, president of the Asia Injury Prevention Foundation, who became the boy's godfather. Let's take a look. Chen Maiang, Tianyun's adopted mother, and Greg Kraft, his godfather, decided to launch the Genital Reconstruction for Children program, commonly known as the Tianyun Journey, in August 2011 following an unforgettable incident. Since then, the program has examined nearly 1,000 patients across Vietnam and nearly 100 of them have received surgery. Among them, 10 were treated for genital reconstruction. Many of the patients were fully sponsored and received free food, accommodation, transportation and medicine. At the hospitals, assistance for the families was provided by 10 student volunteers. Sau khi mà được tham gia cùng với các bạn đến bệnh viện để giúp đỡ các em nhỏ khám chữa bệnh thì em mới hiểu được cái nỗi đau với cả sự mặc cảm của các em bé mà bị như thế. Em có nghe một chị bé con đến thì chị nói là kiểu em bé khi mà mới bắt đầu đi học thì kiểu lúc mà các bạn ở trong lớp mà đang hay đồng phục ạ thì với tất cả các bạn bình thường thì đều đừng đều đều đứng lên hay hết nhưng mà riêng em ấy sẽ chui em chui xuống ngầm bàn thì em ấy hay bởi vì là em ấy thấy được cái sự khác biệt của cơ thể em ấy đối với cả các bạn cùng lứa với mình. To date, the program has invited Dr. De Castro to perform surgery in Vietnam five times. Among the patients that Dr. De Castro has personally operated on, Greg Kraft was most impressed by a poor young man. He had his penis mauled by a dog after his parents left him at home alone when he was just four months old. It's very heartwarming. I mean, it's sad to imagine that somebody for 20 years lived in a living hell, as he called it. But now, uh, when you see him, he's one of the happiest people you could ever imagine meeting. And 
he has the chance later of becoming a completely normal man. One person out 20 years, what it's done to them, and knowing that we've changed his life is just, it doesn't get any better than that. Kraft revealed that it is exactly these stories that motivate him and his wife, as well as Mai Ang and the other members of the program, to continue raising funds to help unfortunate children. It's our honor today to have Thich Nhân's adopted mother, Chan Mai Ang, and his godfather, Greg Kraft, on to talk more about Thich Nhân journey program with the, and their efforts to help other kids with similar plight. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Chị Mai Anh, do đâu mà chị biết đến bác sĩ De Castro? À, tôi cùng với bé Thiện Nhân, với cả cha đỡ đầu của bé, cha nuôi của bé, ông Greg Graf, đã đi rất là nhiều nước trên thế giới trong nhiều năm à, để tìm kiếm làm sao cho bé Thiện Nhân trở thành được người bình thường. Và chúng tôi đã đến Mỹ. À, tại Mỹ chúng tôi gặp được bác sĩ Việt Kiều, một bác sĩ rất nổi tiếng ở Việt Nam là bác uh, Tuệ Đinh và bác đã theo dõi cái trường hợp của bé Nhân và cũng chính nhờ bác tìm kiếm và theo dõi thì với một ngày mới gửi cho Greg Graf và tôi ừ. hai cái bài nghiên cứu khoa học của bác sĩ De Castro từ một nơi nào rất xa xôi về cái việc tái tạo phương pháp tái tạo bộ phận sinh dục cho bé trai và bé gái và từ hai cái bài báo đấy và chúng tôi đã tìm kiếm bác sĩ Roberto và tìm đến với ông. Chị có thể nói gì về ý nghĩa của những ca phẫu thuật mà bác sĩ Roberto de Castro đã tiến hành cho thiện nhân không ạ? Nếu mà nói ý nghĩa thì vô cùng ca mổ này mang đến cho thiện nhân cơ hội tưởng chừng như rất đơn giản với tất cả mọi người đấy là trở thành một người bình thường ừ. và em bé tự tin đi học. Một điều rất đơn giản tự tin ừ. đi học Um, tự tin đến trường như các bạn Và một cái điều tự tin mà Nói thì có vẻ mọi người thấy Không cần thiết Nhưng đối rất cần thiết Đấy là việc mà tự tin đến trường Và đi vào vệ nhà vệ sinh đúng giờ ra chơi Như tất cả các bạn khác Và cái đấy đã mang cho thằng bé Cái sự um, Một cuộc sống bình thường uh, Và cái sự tự tin đấy Nó sẽ ảnh hưởng Tôi tin chắc rằng nó sẽ ảnh hưởng rất nhiều Đến cái cuộc sống sau này của em bé Vâng Chị có thể nói cho em cái điều lớn nhất mà bác sĩ De Castro đã làm được cho thiện nhân và các bé nhỏ khác? Bác sĩ De Castro đã làm được cái điều không phải là quan trọng nữa mà một điều dường như là đúng thực sự là không thể. Một điều không thể và quá tuyệt diệu. Nếu như mà ai có thể nhìn thấy những người cha, người mẹ, bế con, dắt con um, đi khám, đi gặp bác sĩ để khám. Um, những người cha dắt những đứa con gái nhỏ uh, vừa đi vừa khóc. À, rồi họ hy vọng sau ca mổ rồi những người ông người bà vui vì thấy con và cháu mình còn được tiếp tục những thế hệ tiếp sau nữa thì cái điều đấy không thể nào một cái ngôn ngữ hoặc là một cái gì của cuộc đời bình thường có thể diễn tả nổi. Greg, uh, I'll continue with you. Um, it seems to be that um with Dr. De Castro, you've, you've been with him every time there has been a surgery. And what can yeah. you say about Dr. De Castro's devotion to the Thiet Nhân journey? I think the, the, the most striking to me is, is mm -hmm. from the first time that we were in um, Bologna together. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't just complete the operation and then, you know, say mm -hmm. adios, I hope things mm -hmm. work out. He was with us and with Thiet Nhân, you know, night and day. Um, and I think, again, it comes back to my characterization of him as a very warm and compassionate mm -hmm. human being. But even when we decided to start the surgeries here, it's really sort of a funny story. Uh, after the decision was made mm -hmm. that Dr. De Castro would fly here to carry out some corrective work on, on Tian Yun, mm -hmm. um, word started to leak out uh, that this famous doctor was coming. And so uh, we would conversations say you know we've got two or three other kids would you mind taking a look at these <laughs> kids when you come and he no of course not and it grew and it grew and it grew uh, to the point that uh, it was about four months later when he came on the first mission to Hanoi to evaluate to look at um, several kids it turned out there were 120 of them wow and I think this number. also had a big impression on on certainly on Mayang and I mm -hmm. and and Dr. De Castro from the standpoint that we realize that culturally this isn't something that most people are comfortable talking about. Yeah. Their children having a, ge a genital yeah. problem. It is a taboo. 
Exactly. Object, yeah. And whether it was as severe as Tian Yun, having mm -hmm. a traumatic injury like that, we felt like a bubble had, had burst mm -hmm. and people, poor people, even wealthy people, were coming out of the, the, mm -hmm. the, the wood, so to speak, mm -hmm. to ask for help. So um, that's another, I think, milestone moment that yeah. uh, Dr. DeCastro certainly didn't shrug away from mm -hmm. and uh, we see that he's now been back here three other times. Yes, <laughs> it's good to have you. <laughs> Born without genitals or an anus, six-year-old Nguyen Van Tengsen from Tenghua province has undergone two unsuccessful surgical procedures. Every day, he has to carry a chamber pot with him wherever he goes, because liquid is always leaking out. This is the third time that his father, Nguyen Van Zhu, has taken him to be examined by the Genital Reconstruction for Children program. Luckily this time, his son is finally eligible for a surgery. Cháu biết là lần này cháu được đi ngủ để đi sớm được đi học cháu mừng lắm. Và cháu 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 vui, cháu đang ngồi trên bồn ôm trầm lên cổ bố là vậy là con sắp được đi học rồi bố, con sắp có cu rồi. Cháu bảo như thế. The procedure took nearly three hours and Tang Sun's father nearly exploded with happiness. Mổ xong thì bác sĩ vô cái tô cách châu để bác sĩ Việt Nam mình đã nói là ca mổ của cháu là tương đối thành công và là ca mổ mà làm cho ông cho bé tô là hãy cảm thấy hài lòng và ông kết hợp cho cháu cũng được hai ba giai đoạn để rút ngắn cái cái thời gian như cũng như là phẫu thuật nhiều lần ông nó rút ngắn lại thì tâm trạng của em gia đình của em cái tâm trạng hiện tại của em bây giờ là em rất vui có thể là tiền bạc cũng không thể mua được mà cũng không có gì làm cho em vui hơn lúc này được also six years old, Chiu Đức Tuy from Xuân Lâm Commune in the northern mountainous province of Yên Bái has undergone genital reconstruction surgery performed by Dr. De Castro. The operation took place in November 2011. It was a miracle for the boy and freed him from the pains that he had suffered since birth. Con người ta sinh ra, người sinh con trai, người ta phải đi vệ sinh, đi.